busy spring. We have a new calf on the ground. First one of the season for 2022. It's Little Tails, the mom. This is her second calf she's had for us. And it looks like the calf's doing really well. Kind of staying back, letting the two of them bond. It's a very attentive mom. Oops, she sees me. Just wanted to show you guys a t-shirt one of my daughters got me. They always like to get me fun t-shirts. And this one kind of looks like Kean, and yes, he does herd me all the time. Hey everyone, welcome to Homegrown Passion. Today, since Doug has Dosatron system all set up and running, and we've just been running plain water through here, we're gonna put the nutrients in there to get these guys a little bit happier. They've been um, on the lettuce formula, because I've been hand watering them. So they need their tomato formula to get bigger leaves and really get these guys off to a good start so I have good production all summer long. So I used to do my nutrients, I'd buy a prepackaged mix here from Crop King, which was pretty easy to do. All I had to add was the extra calcium nitrate. The reason being is that they didn't add the calcium nitrate into this to um, save on shipping costs. But like I said, it was a uh, mixing and more time consuming. So lucky, luckily and fortunately for me, Doug built the Dosatron system, which will save me a ton of time. So let me show you how I'm going to do the Dosatron nutrients. So last year in the high tunnel, we used this Miller uh, water soluble nutrients for 20-20-20, and it worked really well with the two um, Dosatron system Doug had made out there for me. And we used it for our strawberries, tomatoes, and peppers and hops. Okay, so here's my recipe, and like I said before, I had to divide it in half because we do have the 25 gallon tanks here to hold the nutrients in. I didn't want to go with the bigger tanks because I'm not going to turn them as fast because we don't have as many betel buckets. So I wanted to do a little bit less so you always have fresh nutrients in the tanks. And I always label my tanks one and two and when I measure out all my nutrients um, here I put them in buckets labeled one and two so I don't get them mixed up and put them in the wrong tank. Okay so we're going to start here with tank number two. I'm going to go ahead and take out the um, intake hose here because I don't want to get nutrients messed up on that. So hang on one second here. So I'm going to go ahead and dump these guys in. Give it a little stir. I know I always get lots of comments about my pipe, but I like it and it works good. Maybe next time Doug has a sawmill out, I'll have him cut a piece of wood for me that he could uh, sand down to a nice little paddle for mixing. Okay, keep adding the other ingredients. This one came out of the bag in a clunk, so I'm going to go ahead and drop them on in gently. Then the other thing that goes into nutrient tank two here is um, my micronutrients, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a little bit. Okay, so here I'm going to do tank number one, and we let the water get warm because it's so much easier to mix the nutrients in the warm water. So tank number one has all the macronutrients, the calcium nitrate and the potassium nitrate. And calcium nitrate is always your biggest ingredient. I can tell they're dissolving quite nicely. So the recipe that I'm making up here is for um, injection of 1 to 100. So Doug has the uh, dosatrons dialed in correctly for me. And right now I have them turned off as I'm mixing everything in here. So here's my micronutrients I need to mix up. They're going to be mixed up into a one gallon container and I'll use half in my blue tank. 
Okay, so we have all the nutrients mixed into um, our tanks A and B here, or one and two as I like to call them for the micro and macronutrients. Like I said, we have these dialed into one to 100. pH adjust, that one I'm not 100% sure that we have the right mixture in here, but luckily we'll be able to adjust it here as we watch on the monitor there. I want to keep the pH around um, 5.8 to um, 6.0. So we'll keep that uh, in check and see what happens. So yesterday when Doug was installing the uh, drip irrigation lines here for me, notice I was getting some algae on top of the perlite since I was hand watering everything. So I went ahead and mixed up a little bit of Xerotol 2.0 and sprayed it on the algae here and it's cleaning it up really nice. And so tomorrow I'm gonna go through and put some covering over this to keep any algae growth out of my betel buckets. So here's a quick update on my winter snap beans. It looks like I had 100% germination these guys are getting tall, and I'm really excited to see how they do on the new nutrient system. Here's a quick update on the broccoli and cauliflower plants I did about a week or so ago. They're doing really good here. Been remembering to hand water them twice a day, and they're staying moist enough and taking off. So I'll keep you updated on the progress of this. So here I have some peppers and tomatoes growing. These are going to go in the betel buckets the next day or so. They're the perfect size to put in there. Well, it's exciting to have the new Dosatron system. I know these guys will be getting really big, and I can't wait to harvest them. Well, we've been running this for three days now. Everything's going great. Um, no leaks still. I think I've got this Blue Guardian dialed in. We're at 1.8 on EC, 64 degrees temperature, and 6.2 on the pH. And right now, we're running it at 30 minutes off, and it'll come on just for 20 seconds. So that seems to be what we need it to be. And we looked at the discharge in the back and we don't have any nutrient water coming out. So it's just enough to keep these plants going. Remember, these are 0.5 emitters. So no matter how much we push at it, it's only gonna allow a certain amount of water or nutrient solution through those emitters, which is why you really wanna set up like this. When we add the other two bros, on the other side, this shouldn't change at all. Everything should be exactly the same. We're just adding more volume, so the water pressure will be able to compensate for that, and those emitters will keep that pressure at the same amount and allow the same amount of nutrient water to get to the plants. So I think this is gonna work out great for us. Um, if you wanna look real quick down in the barrels, we've barely used any nutrient solution so I would imagine we'll be able to get at least a month out of each, each uh, barrel and um, that'll save us a lot of times in trying to mix nutrients, especially in the summer, every single day. So really happy about this. And I think if you're considering doing anything like this, you should, because it's, it's worthwhile. Well, I'm really excited about my tomato plants. It's going to be a journey, but I know it's going to be much better production than I've had in the past with all my automation here. Make sure everybody's watered on time. I don't get lazy and just fill it up with water and make sure the nutrients are in there for them. So I hope you guys liked this video. I had fun doing it. So remember to leave me any comments, suggestions, or questions down below, and we'll see you guys next video.